Genshin Impact is, in my opinion, a considerably solid game as it stands. Are there issues? Certainly. Many would point to resin limits, all events being timed exclusives, and the RNG artifact system as major flaws. Those are not what we're discussing today. They could fall under the umbrella that is quality of life updates, but they've been discussed frequently enough. So let's talk about some other quality of life updates that could be total game changers. Starting with a quick pretext. A lot of games, when they update something, remove the old. For everything in today's video that constitutes a new feature or update to a mechanic, we assume they would be optional. As a quick example, say they updated alternate sprints so they are no longer stopped by cliffs. The player would be able to opt out of this new feature with a toggle in the settings menu. Everybody wins. In my opinion, more options for the player is good game design. And with Hoyoverse's recent statement on the Yaimiko targeting rollback, they seem to agree that maintaining the existing experience is just as important as bringing new ones. Right, let's get to it, with a wonderful suggestion from a previous video by these fine commenters. Shield integrity and buff timers. With all the stuff that has timers attached to it in Genshin Impact, one may think this would already be a thing. Yet, as of 2.6, Food and potion buffs, as well as shields, have no visible timer. They're either on, as indicated by a symbol above the health bar or effects surrounding the character, or they're simply off. Now, it's rare that I use food buffs, but when I do, I almost always forget to refresh them due to a lack of notice that they may be expiring. It's easy to lose track of time when battling, and most food buffs last for upwards of 5 minutes. If I glance down and see it's still there, and some 4 minutes pass that I don't keep track of, chances are I won't notice the icon go away until long after. But if I looked down at 4 minutes in and saw only a fifth of the time remained, now I'm much more aware of it. Shields may not last as long, but then they have an unseen health gauge in addition to an invisible timer. And since the shielder is typically switched out after deploying said shield, we can't use their skill cooldown as a point of reference. I feel both buff and shield timers, as well as shield health, could be addressed with an update icon above the health bar. As an example, here is one I designed. A simple, no numbers graphic that tells everything about food buffs or a shield's integrity at a glance. The outer ring of the icon will slowly drain counterclockwise, an indication of the time remaining before the buff or shield expires. For buffs, the inner portion is transparent with an icon matching the type of buff. For shields, the inner portion is a solid color that represents the shield's health, and it will drain from the top whenever the shield absorbs damage. This salad is colored with respect to the element of the shield, yellow for Geo, purple for Electro, and so on. Shields from crystallized reactions will be displayed with a diamond icon in the center, representative of the crystallized shards, while character-specific shields will be represented by a small image of the character's head, similar to the party icons. And thus, everything is available at a glance. The buff or shield's remaining duration, the shield's remaining health, and the origin and element of the shield. A toggle for alternate sprints. I make no attempts to hide my disdain for alternate sprints. They are clunky. More times than not, one finds themselves stuck on the slightest elevation in terrain. Which leads us to the fact that, as discussed in our quick example, they can't be used to dash off platforms or cliffs. This is despite the capacity for such already being part of the game, as we can see here with Mona falling through the air in her alternate sprint. The exit animation is jarring, and its momentary restriction in controlling the character feels unnatural. Popping in and out of the ground during combat, and getting stuck unable to move for half a second each time, is infuriating. For the rotten cherry on top of this absolute mess of a long since melted sundae nobody wanted in the first place, Alternate sprints are interrupted whenever the shortcut wheel is brought up. Meanwhile, normal sprints continue unimpeded. This makes activating elemental sight while in alternate sprints annoying. They're just bad. I loathe the possibility some future character I think seems really cool can have their movement slapped with one of these travesties. A toggle would fix everything. I'd personally be okay with it coming at the cost of losing the alternate sprint's perk. Although for Ayaka, I suppose that'd be a hefty price. As such, bonus points if it's a toggle accessible via the same shortcut menu gadgets are assigned to, so it can be controlled during combat. Or 
they can just let the passive talent activate with the alternate sprint disabled, and nobody will ever have to suffer alternate sprints outside of crossing water or moving slightly faster across those exceedingly rare, perfectly flat surfaces. Allow us to turn off constellations. Three words. Constellation, six, Bennett. And worse yet, a permanent red exclamation point in the top right corner of the screen. I honestly feel this one is made specifically for Bennett, but I'm sure there's more constellations players would like to turn off from time to time. For me personally, that would be Jean's first constellation, which I've yet to activate. I use her for level 1 content, and her pulling in enemies faster is not a good thing in that scenario. Artifact Presets these things are long overdue, although you could probably say the same about a lot of the things on this list. Exactly how they sound, artifact presets let you save multiple artifact templates per character that you can load up in an instant from their details menu. Simple enough, but let's make them better through the wonder of automation. Say the game allows you to save 4 artifact presets per character. The set in the top slot would be their preferred, and we would be able to reorder these as simply as we could with our team setups in Hayakun and Iki. Now, whenever the character is added to the active party, this topmost set is auto-equipped, even if its artifacts are already in use by another character. With some additional logic, we can do away with the obvious problem this presents. What if two or more characters with presets containing the same artifacts are deployed together in a party? The game will give priority to the character closest to the leftmost slot of the party. For example, if Barbara and Kokomi are both added to the party as shown, and both have the same Ocean Hued Clam artifacts in their topmost preset, Barbara is the one who will get to use them because she's closest to the leftmost party slot. If we reorder the party like so, the set will immediately transfer to Kokomi. Note that it would not update with regard to characters falling in combat. It will, however, update with regard to joining co-op, should your current active character be the one without the preset which is now your only party member because you joined a 4 player game. To make sure characters aren't left without artifacts equipped, the game will default to the next preset in the list if the current party configuration leaves them with missing artifacts. In our example where Barbara has the Ocean Hued Clam set due to being closest to the leftmost slot, Kokomi would be equipped with her second of 4 presets. With 4 preset slots per character, everyone in the party will have something to default to. However, gaps could arise still if the same artifacts are used in multiple characters' presets. More logic could be added to combat this, but it honestly starts to become a bit messy at this point, and would be better off left to the player to work out by creating a functioning artifact preset hierarchy. Better, and expanded, targeting systems. Picture the following scenario. You're battling a boss, and have exhausted both of your sprint dodges. Yet a third attack is on the way that'll KO your Shao. Thinking fast, you opt to use his skill, a quick lunge forward that will surely get him out of harm's way. And then Shao instead dashes into the boss and gets slapped. Hard. Or you want to leap off and dash across a gorge. But Shao instead backtracks because there's a mist flower there. This is the other blight on Genshin's movement system, which stands with Mocking Grin next to its good pal, Alternate Sprints. The targeting system. We touched on this a bit in another video, but now let's really dive into the topic. Auto-targeting is never a satisfactory system when it's the sole option. Scenarios like the one above, or just being unable to attack the specific enemy you want without the use of an archer, is frustrating. Doubly so when you want to detonate an explosive barrel or destroy a heliotrol tower that's part of your current objective. And then there's the issue of elemental bursts targeting the wrong enemy, potentially ruining your whole plan simply because D. Luke really headed out for that one hilly churl, instead of the massive army standing in front of him. Thus, the proposition is to update the system to accommodate three optional features. 1. Disable auto-targeting. No more will Shao dash towards the enemy when you're attempting to evade with his skill. The skill will carry him in whatever direction you're holding, or if stationary, in the direction he's facing. This applies to auto attacks and elemental bursts. The player will have four options to choose from in the settings menu. Enable auto targeting, disable auto targeting for melee only, disable auto targeting for ranged only, and disable auto targeting completely. Ranged here includes archers and catalyst users, meaning they will now only attack in front of them. Catalysts would lose their homing on attacks. 
and characters like Mona would have a static range where their attacks take effect. 2. Aimable elemental bursts and skills, if the button is held. Geo Traveler's Starfell Sword is a great example of what this could look like. If the button is held, instead of tapped, your character enters aiming mode. Whether or not they must remain stationary while aiming is up for debate, but I'd lean towards letting them move at the same speed archers can while aiming. 3. Manual Lock-On Yoimiya will no longer target the wrong enemy, nor Yenfei shoot fireballs in the wrong direction. At least I hope so, in a please don't be distant future where this gets added to the game. The ability to finally select a specific enemy to home in on, complete with the ability to switch set selection at the press of a button. We really don't need anything more than what's shown here, but maybe they can come up with something more creative. How about Zelda style Z targeting? Okay, maybe that wouldn't really work in Genshin. Also, a fourth that doesn't need to be optional, aiming for catalysts. Similar to aiming with archers, except targeting of weak spots need not apply so archers retain some uniqueness, and there also doesn't need to be a charge shot, although a charged magic blast would undoubtedly be crazy awesome. With all these features added, players would truly be able to tailor combat to their own preferences. And of course, those who like it as it is, wouldn't have to enable these features. My own setup would probably look something like this. Auto-targeting disabled, aimed burst skills enabled, manual lock-on enabled. Now, uh, how they managed to make any of this even remotely accessible on mobile, we'll leave that to the devs to work their UI magic. And there we have it, 5 quality of life changes I truly hope the game adds in the near future. What do you think? Would these changes improve your experience with the game? Have your own changes you'd like to see? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, a like and subscribe is much appreciated. There's tons of Genshin Impact content on the channel, odds and ends of the variety you may not see too often elsewhere. Compared to that content, this video is surprisingly normal. This is Musashi, signing off. Till next time.